There are several ways to make a hand towel bib. One of the easiest ways is to make a pull-on bib by cutting a large hole in the towel and sewing rib knit cotton around the hole. My bib has a snap in the neck so that it can be easily removed without smearing food into the baby or toddler's hair. While there are a few extra steps, I think you'll find it's well worth the effort and the techniques can be used for many other projects. I started with a set of Target hand towels. Lay one of the towels on your work surface with a nice edge away from you. We're going to cut into the edge that has the care label. Find the center point by folding the towel in half lengthwise. Cut 6 inches up the center of the towel. Then draw a circle at the top of the straight cut. It almost looks like a lollipop. I used a washable marker and a cup with a diameter of 4 inches. Cut out your circle. You can always sew the circles into cloth diaper wet zone areas. Waste nothing! Now onto the bias tape. Purchase double fold bias tape looks like this. When it's all folded, you can see that one side sticks out a little farther than the other. You'll want to try to sew on the more narrow side. That way, when you sew everything together, you have a greater chance of catching the wider back side. Cut two strips of rib knit cotton 13 inches long, perpendicular to the lengthwise grain, and three and a half inches wide. The circumference of the neck hole measures about 14 inches. We want the rib knit to stretch a bit, so it needs to be shorter than the neck hole circumference. If that doesn't make sense now, it will later. If it isn't already obvious which is the right and wrong side of the fabric, keep a little tug on both ends. Jersey and rib knit tend to curl up with the right side on the outside of the curl. Pin right sides together. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own quick bias tape with a bias tape maker. Normally bias tape is cut on the bias, 90 degrees from the lengthwise grain. But in this case, I don't need my bias tape to go around any curves, so a scrap of straight grain fabric will do nicely. For this particular bias tape maker, I need to cut 2 inch wide strips of fabric. Thread your fabric into the wide end of the tool. Use a pin or seam ripper to help poke the material through. Smooth out your fabric and you're ready to press. Bias tape makers come in all sorts of sizes. Just choose the one that is right for your particular project. Now here's a trick that'll save you a tiny bit of frustration and burnt fingers. Pin the end of your bias tape to your ironing board. Use your fingers to help guide the fabric as you slide the bias tape maker down the strip of fabric. Press the tape in half if you wish. Let's compare my bias tape to the store-bought bias tape. Haha! -ha. I'm going to show you this again from a different angle. Make sure that the inner edges of the bias tape do not touch. In fact, you actually want a little gap. If your edges touch or overlap, you'll end up with a bulky mess. Cut your bias tape into short strips. I found that about 8 inches works for me. Ah, a clear picture. Can you guess the next step? Unfold your bias tape and place along the edge of your straight cut. If you're using purchase bias tape, place the narrow side on the tape along the edge. Pin in place. Sew a regular stitch right in the pressed crease for both sides. Next, fold the bias tape over the edge of the towel. I stitched my handmade bias tape about a sixteenth of an inch to the right of the crease to make folding around the edge easier. Can you see it? Make sure your bias tape covers your existing stitch line on the back. Finger press or iron both ends of your bias tape inwards a little bit. It will keep the raw edge from showing on the final project. Make sure you're doing this on the finished edge of the towel, not the cut circle side. Pin in place. Don't worry about going through all the layers. It's quite thick here. Just catch enough so that the bias tape stays in place. to sew the rib knit. Start sewing on the folded edge. Sew a regular stitch length half an inch from the cut edge. Drop your needle about a quarter to half an inch on the fabric. Don't try to start sewing off of the fabric or it might bunch. Back tack to the folded edge and stitch forward. You can save yourself time and thread if you continue sewing onto the edge of the next piece. Back tack when you get to the folded edge. 
if you sew cut edge to cut edge, you don't have to worry about nipping the fold with your scissors when you cut the two pieces apart. Slip your index finger inside the corner, put your thumb on the outside and flip the collar right side out. Match the sewn ends together and find your center point. Mark it with a pin. We're going to finish sewing the bias tape to the bib now. Set your machine to a zigzag or triple zigzag or some other fun decorative stitch you've been wanting to try. You can do a straight stitch here. If you're boring, use your bias tape as your guide and stitch right along the seam. Back tack at the end. If you're using a decorative stitch, position the other side backwards so that you can get a firm grip on the tail of the bias tape. If you try to sew from the bulky end, you might want to pull your hair out. Just trust me, don't do it. See how I put this side of the bib on my machine backward? Normally, you sew with all the fabric on the left. This time, all the fabric is to the right. Now my decorative top stitching will match on both sides, and I don't have to fight the bulk at the edge of the bib. Lay your bib on your work surface and match the long edges together. Find the center point on the neck opening. Pin to mark. Match the pinned center point to the rib knit. Next, match the sewn ends of the rib knit to the edge of the bias tape. This is a little tricky, but you can do it. The seams of the rib knit should lie parallel to the outer edge of the bias tape and in place. Find another center point, pin and continue having each section and pinning. Do the same for the other side. You'll be stretching the rib knit here. That's a good thing. Keep the seam allowance of the rib knit pressed open. To back tack in place, stitch from the edge of the rib knit seam allowance back to the seam of the rib knit. Then come forward. Use a regular stitch length to sew the rib knit to the bib. Sew half an inch from the edge. Move the towel out of the way as you sew. You don't want any puckers or gathers. Keep it flat under the presser foot. Back tack at the end. Trim away any excess bias tape, but leave yourself with about an inch from the sewn seam. Fold the rib knit around the bias tape and make sure the existing seam is covered with the rib knit. Pin in place. Do the same for the other side. Double check to make sure the edges match up and fix if necessary. Pin the rib knit over the seam allowance and sewn seam. To make your life easier, you don't need to worry about tucking the raw cut edge of the rib knit under. This material won't fray and you'll reduce the bulk around the collar by not adding one more layer. Work in halves, first pinning the center point, then the quarter points, and so on. Triple check to make sure you have covered the stitch line with the rib knit by at least a quarter of an inch to preferably a solid half inch. Turn the bib over and prepare to top stitch. A straight stitch in the ditch between the rib knit and the terry is fine here, or you can use this opportunity to play with a decorative stitch again. Remember to back tack at the beginning and the end, sewing a quarter to half an inch on the material, back tack to the end, and then move forward. Otherwise, it's just too bulky. Final step is to put on the snaps. You can either use sew on snaps or a snap press with poly resin snaps. Step back and enjoy your work. Then put the bib on your hungry happy kid and enjoy some messy spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs>